Japanese are very smart people. It wasn't entirely unlike the space race, the mission to create an artificial substance for our kind to sustain ourselves on. Teams of vampire scientists from all over the world were trying to synthesize human blood for vampire consumption. One of our very own chancellors, in fact, Nora Gainsborough, was working with a team of financiers on the project. But the victors turned out to be a Japanese pharmaceutical company, the Yakimono Corporation, run by humans who had initially developed the idea for trauma patients sustaining dangerous amounts of blood loss. And so, the race was seemingly over. But for vampires, it had just begun. The headquarters of True Blood's parent company calls Tokyo its home. And there are several bottling plants in various places throughout the world, one of them not too far from here in Houston, Texas. These plants produce and ship cases of the blood substitute each month to vampires everywhere. Nairobi, La Paz, Siberia, Christchurch, the list goes on, you can imagine. But with the production facilities under siege and the world without its source of true blood, vampires are forced to feed upon humans for our very survival. And this, the Bible tells us, is the way God intended it to be. It's what he created for Lilith. But herein lies the debate for so many whose faith is shaken. They see our world as very different from the one that Lilith knew. They believe we should adapt to the changing tides, evolve, as they say, and choose to live on bottled chemicals. Roman championed the synthetic blood. He stood by Dr. Kinji Igawa and his team at the Yakimono Corporation and asked them to shuttle our kind into the 21st century. He believed that if it were not for true blood, the great revelation could not have happened. We would still be living in the darkness of our coffins, denying our very existence. But I always found this ironic, you see. Because isn't abstaining from human blood another form of denying our existence? A means to repress our natural selves and distrust the one true God that brought us into being. I know that it is sometimes untidy to mix religion and philosophy. But I am an admitted fan of John Stuart Mill's form of utilitarianism. That which is most moral is that which creates the most happiness. That's not just basic hedonism. He holds that not all forms of happiness are equal. There are higher pleasures and there are lower pleasures in life. And the book of the vampire makes it clear, to me at least, that the pleasure of even one vampire is worth a great deal more than the trivial pleasures of all mankind.